on the subject of Kamala Harris, she's you've debated her, you know her. Uh, she was very nasty to you uh, in the in the last you know go round. What kind of a person is she? <laughs> I'm smiling as I'm remembering um, in, in the the big famous debate moment that that we had and the exchange that we had that. I, I can't even tell you how many people stop me who say that is how they know me from that that exchange we had where I simply held her to account for her record on criminal justice that she was touting, she was so proud of and exposed the truth about the harm that she had done when she was in a position to actually help people and bring about positive reform. I, I was remembering right after that debate happened, she went back into the spin room and she was asked a question. I forget which network, it was CNN or MSNBC. They were asking her a follow-up about her record and about what I had questioned her on. And her response was, well, I'm not going to comment on someone who is not a top tier candidate for president. Ugh. And and to me, that kind of illustrates what kind of person she actually is. Mm -hmm. What do you think the Democrats are doing right now? Because we have Nancy Pelosi now refusing to say that Joe Biden should stay in. She was asked over and over and it was pretty explicit. I'll just pull it up so I don't. So I give you the exact language. The question um, on MSNBC by Jonathan Lemire was, does he have your support to be the head of the Democrats? It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. She doesn't say yes, uh, then he follows up. He's said he made the decision. He said it firmly this week, he's going to run. Do you want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. And that's the way it is. Whatever he decides, we'll go with. So once again, she didn't say, yes, I want him to run. Now you have James Clyburn refusing to say to the Washington Post whether Joe Biden's decision to stay in is final. He's national mm -hmm. campaign co-chairman. He says, ask him. Uh, so there's daylight starting to open up and you've got Joe Manchin saying, just wait to the end of this week, just wait. You've got George Clooney coming out the Times saying, I love him, but he's gotta go. And at that fundraiser three weeks ago, I saw the Joe Biden that you all saw in the debate. Like he must go, yeah. he cannot win. The polls showing that he will not only lose, he will bring the House and the Senate uh, into Republican control. So you know Democratic politics better than most. What's gonna happen? You know, I, th I think that the powers that be who are, are obviously not many of these elected officials who are standing out there basically shrugging their shoulders, saying that they will basically the read between the lines is whether it's Nancy Pelosi or Clyburn or any of these other people, they are waiting to be told what to do. They are waiting to be uh, uh, to, to get their marching orders from the powers that be behind the curtains who are trying to decide which is going to be their winning horse in this race. Um, they don't really care about Joe Biden. Not, they don't really care about Kamala Harris or anyone else. Their, their goal is just to win so that they can stay in power. They don't care about policies or record or effectiveness or qualification or any of the things that we as voters would like to see in our candidate for the presidency. It's all about their preservation of power. So nothing would surprise me at this point if they go ahead and and basically threaten Joe Biden with the leverage of money and saying, hey, you're not going to have any support if you continue down this road, uh, or if they choose someone else by showering them with, with support. I just think it's important that voters don't be distracted by whatever the chess moves are that they are going to make. Just know for sure and with confidence that whatever front man they put forward it's going to be more of the the exact same insanity, woke, racializing everything, radical, warmongering policies that the Biden Harris administration has shown us uh, that they are that they are doing in the last three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that of that I have no doubt. Um, they there are reports coming out now. We heard the reports immediately after the debate that it's really Jill. She's the only one who can convince him not to do this not to stay on. I mean, I think he should go right now. I don't think he should be the sitting president for one minute longer. He should be 25th amendmented right out of office. He does not belong there. But she also is obviously power hungry and is not taking care of her husband who appears infirm to me. Um, she clearly wants the power. And now there are a couple of reports about her. We showed the audience a picture of her a couple of years ago in advance of the G7. She's sitting in his chair with his jacket over the chair, getting ready for the G7. Now we have news that 
she's sitting in on Oval Office meetings. Kevin McCarthy mm. gave an interview on Fox News yesterday and said that, that Jill Biden is sitting in on Oval Office meetings herself. That led to this question that was asked of Corrine Jean-Pierre about Jill's role uh, in the White House on Tuesday. Watch this in uh, SOP 13. Kevin McCarthy just said that when he was the speaker, many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. When the First Lady is in these meetings, is she making decisions or is she no. just advising the president? No, the president is the president of the United States. He makes decisions. You tell me, what is the First Lady doing there with the Speaker of the House discussing policy. This is obviously this wouldn't have been newsworthy, which Kevin McCarthy would know if they were just glad handing and saying Merry Christmas. This is very clearly policy yeah. discussions. What the hell is the first lady doing in there? Yeah, I, you know, seeing Corinne Jean-Pierre's response, anybody who saw the debate, anybody who's been paying attention for the last few years knows that that that's a lie. It's a lie because we've seen that that he is incapable of of even communicating uh very simple things that you can tell he wants to try to communicate uh the 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 crux of what is so wrong about all of this once again is that voters elected Joe Biden into office and we can't say exactly who that person is who is making those decisions so is it Jill Biden or is there someone else in the room we're hearing Hunter Biden is now in these rooms and has now become an advisor of uh, a close advisor to to the president uh it, it comes down to accountability and if voters don't have any idea who is actually making those decisions and it's any one of a number or a group of unelected individuals then that directly contravenes our constitution and our democratic republic and our ability as as voters to ensure that we have the government that we chose to put in place and and so that that's going to continue to be an issue uh and once again i you know when you look at um some of the focus and the headlines around President Biden's speech before NATO this past couple of days, are they're not focusing on the substance of what he's saying, which is actually very seriously consequential, the speech that someone wrote for him to say. Instead, they're saying, could he finish a sentence? Did he actually deliver a speech without stumbling? The substance has been shoved to the side, once again, distracting us from what is actually most important to all of us right now here in this oh, country. Oh, I want to get to that. We're, we're, I, I, you're the perfect person to ask about what he was saying about NATO and Ukraine. Do you ever think to yourself, how can I work so hard and still be in debt? The piles of overdue bills, the threatening phone calls, never having money to do anything. It just won't stop. If you're trapped in debt, done with debt can be a way out. They have developed aggressive new strategies to end your debt permanently. Done with debt stands between you and your harassing bill collectors. They tirelessly negotiate with your creditors to lower or even forgive what you owe. And they do it all without bankruptcy or new loans. One client said, one phone call saved us a fortune. I wish we had done this long ago. Done With Debt has unique strategies to get you out of debt faster and put more money in your pocket every month. But you do need to hurry because some of the debt solutions are time sensitive and you don't want to miss out. Visit donewithdebt.com. Speak with one of their debt relief strategists for free. What do you have to lose? Except your debt. Go to donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.